So what is up everyone, Albert here, coming back at you with a new video. Now, Jacqueline Comes Home just came out a couple of days ago, and these are my thoughts and opinions about that movie. Anyways, before I get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to like this video, and or dislike it if you don't like it. And anyways, I will try to make this video as unbiased as possible. I will also sidetrack here and there to give context to what I am saying. Um... Now this video will be parted into two sections. The first one will be for the film review, for the actual film, and the other half will be about my opinions on how the movie actually portrayed these real life events. So anyways, on to the video. So anyways guys, big spoiler alert, this video might have a couple spoilers here and there, and if you haven't watched the movie, I suggest that Actually, you know what? Just watch this video first. Don't watch the movie. Unless you're really, really curious about what happened. But anyways, here's some context. So Jacqueline Comes Home is basically a movie about the Chong sisters and how they died and like how the family tried to cope up with their daughter's deaths. Now, this is in relation to the 1997 murder case of the Chong sisters which actually happened in real life. I suggest you guys look that up. Anyways, um, the movie starts with Mary Joy or Donalyn Bartolome as she gets home and tells her dad that somebody was like stalking her and how that's basically how the movie started. And basically, um, the movie already started in the middle of what's happening. Um, this isn't quite uncommon. Basically, a lot of movies have already done this where they start in the middle. But the way that this movie portrays what happened is just all over the place. The beginning was so chaotic that there wasn't even enough time for the audience to actually make that relational interaction with the people inside the movie. There's just no emotional attachment so that I will be enticed to actually see what happens next. Basically, everything was just thrown out. Emotions were all over the place. It was just so chaotic. It was just so fast. Well, granted, they managed to actually fix this in the middle of the movie where they actually managed to hook the audience a little bit about the characters and what they're going through and about what's happening. But basically, it didn't happen to like two thirds of the film, I think, or just half of the film. And just why Viva Films? Like, you managed to make so many good films, Santa Antolali Stella, that's one of them, and like, you managed to entice us with the characters, you managed to build a rapport with the audience and the people inside your movies, but this was just not one of them. You're just not gonna feel that till the middle of the movie. And for me, that plays a big part because if you're not attached to someone in the movie like why are you watching it like if you're not here like, <sighs> they barely even scratched the surface of what was happening and it was just so so flat it was just so flat the movie was just super flat the villains they portrayed them as black and white as in like ito ako this is what I am and I have no other intention, this is just me, I'm just a villain. And that's just it. There's no backstory, there's no like moral intentions. It's just like, it's just that. It didn't seem like it was even aimed to entertain the audience, but instead, it seemed like it was a sugarcoat what really happened in real life. Now, it was luckluster at best. That I'm going to say. But I wouldn't recommend anyone to watch it unless they're really curious how Viva tried to portray the film and what happened in real life. So anyways, here are some thoughts on how I actually viewed the film as a whole. Now here are my thoughts on like how I actually viewed the film based on what happened in real life. Now before watching the film, I've already seen the documentary called Give up tomorrow. If you haven't seen it, I suggest that you watch the documentary. It's up on YouTube and it's only an hour and 20 minutes long. And it's really, really amazing. Actually, this documentary might actually seem... Actually, it is. It's actually better than this film, to be honest. 
It's a documentary based on the Chong sisters and their case and what happened and Paco and all of that stuff. And it really tells a lot and it really opens your mind to get your gears working and understand why these things are happening. And it will actually give you an insight on how this film really hits me up on the nerve and just makes me a little bit so in distraught, so disappointed and so many other things. Um, for the film itself, I'm actually unbiased with what I said a while ago. All those things I said was actually true for my heart. Regardless if I've ever watched this documentary first or that movie, my opinion wouldn't change a bit. Now yes, that documentary is a little bit biased on the injustice system of the Philippines, but it's already a fact actually. Judging the state of what our country is in right now, I would say that they were in complete right and they didn't even push it as much as Jacqueline did. Actually here is a statement from Rappler on how they actually viewed the film and its biases. Now it says here that the film is reprehensible not because it is biased but because it is responsible in pushing for biases and that's the problem. Actually, while we're here in Rappler territory, um, here's another insight of what they wrote about the movie. It reeks of depression. It hides underneath religion. It cowers behind simplistic characterizations, utilizing black and white and often unrealistic depictions of villains and heroes that are more suited for soap operas than controversial true stories. It mooches for sympathies, relying on cardboard cutouts to stand for living and breeding human beings whose innate complexities and motivations have given the rise to the necessary public debate that surrounds the Chong narrative. And that's the thing. It feels so sympathetic not knowing what really happened. It's, it's just like a desperate call out for remorse for what happened more than 19 years ago actually. The thing is, I'm not bashing the Chongs, but the thing is they are pushing their overly one-sided exaggerated biases onto people watching this film who hasn't even saw the actual documentary. And they aren't even doing it the right way. The way Give Up Tomorrow did it was that they actually inspired debate and recourse among the people who are watching it so that they will come up with their own conclusions on whether what happened or not on the story. But this, this is just pushing its biases on us without us even being able to think about what else could have happened. The way they are actually portrayed or they didn't say it indirectly, but it definitely portrays Sunny Boy as being Paco, and that was just really, really insensitive. The way that, imagine this, um, they, someone portrays you in a movie as this bad guy, even though you are not the bad guy. And they hide you in a different name, but you know deep inside that that is you they're trying to portray. It's really insensitive. Paco has already received so much hate from the media and this doesn't make it any better. In fact, this movie doesn't do anyone any good. Not the Chongs, not Paco, not anyone. This would also cause the Paco advocates to hate on the Chongs even more. Which is not something that I would like to see in this world. People are people. And they deserve to be treated that way human beings as God's creations. Look inside and know that everyone is complex and innate and everyone feels emotions. No one deserves this. God doesn't want this to happen and neither do I so this is me telling you guys that this is not how we should advocate this movie. For me this mo movie doesn't need to exist actually it just pushes in more hate from the people all around. Now take this movie as you will, but we have no right to speak death upon life. So many people has been stepped on with this film. The actresses, the actors, the people who are related to the Chongs and the people who are related to Paco and the seven other people who were arrested. The least we can do is at least pay our respects 
by not pushing our biases and causing hate to muster up with one another and just causing a battle of injustice with one another. That's not what's supposed to happen. God doesn't want to divide us. God wants to put us together in unity no matter what view we take on this. Let's not push our biases to the point that it's actually going to hurt other people or going to step on other people. Here's how my friend Ati Julise worded it out. She says here, What happened to the Chong family was very devastating. Very devastating. And no one is discredited the realness. What happened to the Chong family was devastating. Very devastating. And no one is discrediting the realness of their pain. But we have to remember that there are these men and their families who suffered great despair because these seven men were tried and convicted for a crime they clearly didn't commit. As far as evidence or the lack of it are concerned, the suffering of the one family will never make it right to convict innocent people. The movie's trailer, Jacqueline Comes Home, personally did not include an angle where they are inviting the audience to think whether the Chong Seven actually committed the crime. It just left off from assumption that they actually did. But even though, please, let's not bash the artist, nor the sisters. We don't even know where they are, and I don't see the need for that. People are entitled to their own opinions and reasonings. The post was not intended to hurt, but to raise what's on the documentary. Please, let's just do our research before bashing. Thank you. Now, as for my conclusion, it wasn't the best film I've seen. I rated probably like 4.5 out of 10. It was just so all over the place. And them not giving the emotional attachment that we need at the beginning of the movie, that was just bad. I wouldn't recommend my friends to watch this. Go ahead, watch it if you want to. But but I just feel that this movie is out there to gain publicity from a tragic event. And I don't think that it even needs to be made in the first place. But it's here, and we can't do anything about it. But remember guys, that this film is loosely based on a true story. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below on what you think this film was and how it hit you or like what are your thoughts about it? I really, really want to know. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Have a wonderful day. Peace.